The new Nikon D3300 is Nikon's smallest, lightest current DSLR. It's an entry-level camera with pro-level image quality. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. It hasn't been long since Nikon released the D3200, and now there's a D3300. But, as I discovered while I was talking with the Nikon folks in January, these two DX format models will coexist at the entry level in the Nikon DSLR lineup. When most people decide they want a DSLR, instead of just snapping shots with their smartphone, they're usually interested in better image quality and the versatility that comes from a changeable lens camera. The image quality you get from this 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and Nikon's new X-Speed 4 image processor is beyond what most people normally expect from entry-level DSLRs. That's because this is the first entry-level DSLR with no optical low-pass filter. Now, until recently, image sensors have used filters to slightly blur images at the pixel level to minimize moray pattern interference, but that's no longer necessary, and the result is sharper images. That new processor does a couple of nice additional things. It helps the camera shoot up to five frames a second. Capturing animals or kids playing is going to be a better experience. Low light, high ISO performance is really good too, so you'll see less noise than most consumer cameras deliver when you're shooting your kids night games or taking indoor shots without a flash. High ISO performance is very good, but of course modern full frame sensors still perform a bit better. One last thing I should mention that comes from this new processor is great battery life. The D3300 is rated to capture 700 shots per charge. Another reason this entry-level camera captures great shots is Nikon's new kit lens, the AFS DX Nikkor 18-55 f3.5-5.6 lens with VR2 vibration reduction. It's good glass, and the design results in a more compact position when it's locked for travel. While I like the lens performance and quality, I don't like the compact locked position for a couple of reasons you have to press the button on the lens barrel and rotate it to unlock the lens before you can shoot, or even access all of your camera's controls and menu options. The 11-point autofocus system is one of those things that really identifies this as a consumer camera. Still, the focus performance is fast and accurate, and there are just a couple of kinds of shooters who might be a bit disappointed with focus performance. Shooters who aren't comfortable with optical viewfinder focusing techniques, like when you point the camera in one direction to grab focus, then recompose to take the shot. And people using live view focusing might be disappointed that it does the back and forth focus hunting with each shot. Interestingly though, there's a face tracking option with live view photography and not with optical viewfinder autofocus. The first thing I noticed when I picked up the D3300 is how grippy the camera is. I really like it. I have average size hands, so the small body was just a little bit small compared to what I prefer, but since the body is all polycarbonate construction, it's very lightweight. Since the D3300 is targeted at entry-level consumers, the body isn't weather sealed, but it is available in red, black, and gray, and I really like this dark gray color on the model I tested. The 3-inch 921,000 dot LCD was crisp and bright, but it doesn't tilt and it's not a touchscreen. While I'm talking about the camera's design, let me mention that the Wi-Fi capability isn't built into this camera. So if you want Wi-Fi, you'll need to add the optional WU-1A adapter. If you plan to use Wi-Fi regularly though, you probably should opt for the D5300 because it has Wi-Fi built in. The mode dial has advanced shooting modes like program, shutter priority, aperture priority, and full manual mode, as well as full auto and a nice collection of scene modes so that you can just tell the camera about the scene that you're in and all the settings are taken care of. There are special effects modes so that you can do in-camera post-processing as you shoot 
and you can get images that are super vivid or color sketches. And one of the effects is an easy panorama mode. While it is easy to use and you can pan left or right and up or down, it is limited because you don't get to pick the end point of your pano and the available sizes are pretty limited as well. Just a quick tip here though, because of how the panorama mode works, up and down panning captures bigger overall panoramic images than the left to right panning. So if you want a bigger final image for bigger prints, shoot your wide panoramas in vertical orientation. One last thing that's a really nice feature of the mode dial is Nikon's guide mode. Lots of cameras have a question mark button that you can press and get some information about the feature or the function that you're looking at, and the D3300 has that too. But if you put the mode dial in guide mode, you can have camera lessons at the same time you're taking pictures. It's a really nice feature for people who want to learn while they shoot. The rear LCD panel is a live view monitor, an image review screen, it's where your menus are displayed, and it's also an info screen. I like the look of the modern info screen, but if you prefer the more traditional layout, that's available with a quick menu change. I also like how Nikon gives us access to quick changes without a trip to the menus by simply pressing the I button. While you can't access everything you might want to, you do have a fair selection of options. I wish that once an item was selected, you could just move the command dial to make the change. Instead, you do have to press the OK button first, but then you can make the changes. Nevertheless, it's still quicker than a full trip to the menus. I mentioned earlier that there are special effects which are available and can be applied as you shoot, but the camera also allows you to do in-camera editing after you take the pictures. Honestly, I'm not the target market for in-camera editing. It just makes more sense to me to do all my editing on the computer, but my son loves the idea because he can make all his images look cool in the camera, then upload them directly to his smartphone or tablet, and then push those images to the web. You just need to have that Wi-Fi adapter I talked about earlier. The D3300 video quality is surprisingly good. You can capture up to 1080 60p video, and there's even a mic jack. Most pro videographers won't have quite enough adjustable controls while filming, like aperture or mic volume changes on the fly, but most amateurs don't need that kind of control, and the movies they capture will be especially good quality, compared to what they're probably used to. By the way, the aperture and mic are adjustable, just not during recording. The D3300 has a surprising number of pro features, though there aren't enough buttons and dials to give pros quick access to those settings like they might be used to. For example, many Nikons have quick two-button card reformatting, and high-end DSLRs have easier access to ISO adjustments, but really, none of these are deal breakers. When it comes to default settings, most everything is set up for a new photographer, and you can make adjustments as you learn. I'm really happy Nikon has started to automatically lock the shutter release button when the memory card slot is empty, so that new users who may have forgotten to put a memory card back in the camera won't shoot a bunch of shots thinking that they're all being captured. One default setting kind of mystifies me though. Every time you clear off a card and shoot a batch of images, it restarts the file naming with image one. So if you shoot a few hundred shots, dump them to your computer, clear your card, and shoot a bunch more, that second batch of images will have the same file names as your first batch. And if you have a few memory cards and you keep shooting and swapping cards all day, at the end of the day, you'll have a bunch of cards with different sets of photos, but with the same file names. I'd be willing to bet new users wouldn't even know to look for a setting to change on their camera for that behavior. If you're looking for it though, it's called File Number Sequence, and it's in the third setup menu. Make sure you turn that on. If you're looking for your first DSLR because you want great quality images or great video, and you want to start with a nice kit lens and have room to grow, especially as you learn about camera settings and add to your lens collection, have a look at the Nikon D3300. It's a lightweight, versatile, affordable DSLR and a great place to start. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching.
Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.